بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم اسٹوڈنٹس آئی ہوپ آل آف یو آر ڈوئنگ ویل وی آر ہیئر ود لیکچر آن دا پارٹ ٹو آف فارماکو جینیٹکس اینڈ لیٹس ہیو اے کوئک ری کیپ آن وٹ وی ڈیڈ پریویسلی دا موسٹ امپورٹنٹ تھنگ وچ یو ہیو ٹو میمورائز از دا گول آف فارماکو جینیٹکس وٹ از دیٹ یو ہیو ٹو پرسکرائب دا رائٹ ڈراگ فار دا رائٹ پیشنٹ ایٹ دا رائٹ ڈوز ان دس وے یو کین مینیمائز دا رسک آف ہٹ اینڈ ٹرائل پرپز آف شفٹنگ فرام ون گروپ آف ڈراگس ٹو اندر گروپ آف ڈراگس اینڈ ناٹ گیٹنگ دا better outcome and you can also risk uh, minimize the risk of toxicity in the individual because increasing the dose of the drug and not getting the better outcome can also lead to toxicity so with the help of the pharmacogenetic study we can get a better outcome in the person so pharmacogenomics as we discussed is the study of genes and their effects on the medications A person can be a poor or a rapid metabolizer depending upon its genetic makeup. This will help the physician and the patient as well in personalized medicine. For example, if you get a report of genetic testing that in your uh, genetic system that particular enzyme is deficient or you have any mutation or any polymorphism, this will lead to non-responder as a patient or a good responder to a uh, to a particular drug so in this way the physician can prescribe a drug according to your uh, metabolizing status as well so this is one of the aspect in which the pharmacogenetic studies are very helpful and this is a very emerging uh, topic for the physicians and the patients as well let us have an example of a drug to understand this mechanism codeine we discussed yesterday codeine is an opioid analgesic and it is metabolized through cytochrome 2d6 system into its active metabolite which is morphine and you all know you all have heard about morphine is an opioid analgesic since there are two types of analgesics it can be NSAIDs which are non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs or we have another analgesics which can be opioid analgesics which are derived from opium analgesics are those drugs which relieve pain so normally what is happening that opioid codeine is getting converted into its active metabolite which is morphine and it has analgesic property but in some individuals unfortunately what is happening that there is a variant of cytochrome 2d6 which leads to inappropriate metabolism of codeine and hence it is unable to relieve the pain because it is not converted into its active metabolite which is morphine and the purpose of the morphine was to act as an analgesic and relieve the pain so this is an example of cytochrome 2d6 variant in case of codeine and in some individuals we label them as poor metabolizers so in those individual the drug is not metabolized properly it takes a lot of time so what is going to happen the half life of the drug is going to increase leading to its uh, increased plasma half life and increased toxicity of that drug in the body another example of the drug of pharmacogenetic is hydralazine this was given to you for your assignment and uh, i told you that it's an anti hypertensive drug and it is acetylated in the liver its bio transformation occurs through acetylation and there are some individuals who are fast acetylators their metabolism of the that drug in their body is very fast so there is decreased bioavailability leading to decreased plasma half life and of course if the drug is not available in the body then the anti hypertensive effect of that drug would also be decreased whereas some individuals are called as slow acetylators and they are metabolized at a very slow rate which leads to increased bioavailability and leading to toxic effects such as systemic lupus erythematosus that is reversible i hope all of you are familiar with the this uh, disease which is sle systemic lupus erythematosus it is an autoimmune disorder it affects uh, multiple organs and there is a butterfly rash particular butterfly rash and this is a drug induced lupus so drug induced lupus is reversible once the drug is stopped then the effect of the drug is also reversed 
So this is the presentation of the systemic lupus erythematosus. There is a butterfly rash on the cheek areas. Another example of the pharmacogenetics is defective ester hydrolysis. It is seen with a defect in the enzyme pseudocholinesterase. It's an enzyme which is responsible for the metabolism of succinylcholine. And what is succinylcholine? It's a neuromuscular blocker and it blocks the neuromuscular junction. And that is why it is used as a muscle for muscle paralysis. As an adjunct to the general anesthetic, it is used for the paralysis or the relaxation of the muscle so that a surgeon can perform the surgery on the muscles. So but what happens if there is a defect in this enzyme, then there would be prolonged stay of succinylcholine in the body. And what happens which leads to the prolonged neuromuscular blockade and it can lead to the paralysis and even the paralysis of the respiratory muscles leading to apnea and death. Another example of pharmacogenetics is malignant hyperthermia. A very important example which is covered in this journal pharmacology. It will be covered in autonomic pharmacology as well as in CNS pharmacology. It's a condition in which there is increased body temperature along with the muscle rigidity and the patient when exposed to two types of drugs. Either halogenated hydrocarbons like general anesthetics in which the drug which is notorious for causing malignant hyperthermia is halothane. Halothane, when given in combination with succinylcholine, which is a neuromuscular blocker, and we need to relax the muscle before surgery, so we give the combination of various drugs before surgery. It can be general anesthetic, it can be neuromuscular blocker. So in those individuals who are genetically susceptible, there would be a condition which is called malignant hyperthermia in which there would be increased level of calcium. And there would be excessive muscle contraction which leads to increased lactic acid and high body temperature. Not all the individuals who are going to undergo general anesthetics or, uh, are not going to suffer from malignant hyperthermia. Only those individuals who have autosomal dominant trait in which there is defect in the calcium receptors, rhinodine receptors, only those individuals are going to be affected by this condition which is called malignant hyperthermia. You have to remember the names of two drugs, succinylcholine and halothane when given in combination. So uh, this diagram will help you memorize the malignant hyperthermia before the operation when the anesthetic is given, the patient uh, suffers from increase in the body temperature hyperthermia and there is increase in the muscle rigidity there are tachyarrhythmias as well as there's increased muscle contractility leading to malignant hyperthermia and how do you treat this condition because it's because of the increased level of calcium in the body so you give a calcium channel blocker that is dentroline Dentroline. It's a very important university question. You can be asked directly that define malignant hyperthermia and what is its treatment. Or you can be given a question, what is the use of dentroline in malignant hyperthermia? Or you can be asked this question in another way. If a clinical scenario, if a person has to undergo a surgery and few uh, hours after the surgery, he was presented with increased lactic acid level, increased body temperature and increased muscle rigidity. So, what is the drug of choice for this condition? So you have to write that the patient had taken succinylcholine as an anesthetic as well as a muscle uh, relaxant uh, that is succinylcholine and after that he suffered from malignant hyperthermia because of its genetic, uh, abnormal genetic mutation of this calcium receptor. All right, so this is how you attempt the question and you can be asked, remember students over there, uh, there is a question ki what is the rationale for the use of this drug in this condition. The rationale means why are we giving, what is the reason for giving this drug for this particular condition. All right, the rationale means the right drug for the right time for the right disease. All right, so malignant hyperthermia is a very important university question. Note down student over here and it will be repeatedly mentioned. 
Yes, yeah. students. So before ending the lecture, I would like to share two MCQs with you of the previous topics which we have covered last week. Number one is drug metabolism in humans usually results in a product that is. So what is the main outcome of drug metabolism or the purpose of drug metabolism is is less lipid soluble than the original drug more likely to distribute intracellularly, more likely to be reabsorbed by the kidneys, more lipid soluble than the original drug or less water soluble than the original drug. And I hope you all have now the clear concept of metabolism and biotransformation. The purpose of biotransformation is basically to make the drug more excretable, right? Or how it can make the, make, make the drug more excretable by making it more water soluble. So, if a drug is water soluble, it is polar, it is ionized and it is less lipid soluble. So, of course, the option A is the correct answer for your question number one. Question number two is, if the therapy with multiple drugs cause induction of drug metabolism in your asthma patient, it will. For example, in a patient, if you are giving a drug and it causes the induction of the drug metabolizing enzyme system. All right, you have done enzyme induction and enzyme inhibition or there are certain drugs which induce the cytochrome P450 system or the subsystem or certain drugs that inhibit the cytochrome system. So if a drug is given and it increases the metabolism of another drug, so what is going to happen? It will be associated with increased smooth endoplasmic reticulum associated with increased rough endoplasmic reticulum or it can be associated with decreased enzymes in the soluble in the soluble cytoplasmic fraction or requires three to four months to reach completion or it can be irreversible so apply the knowledge of um, drug metabolism we all know that whenever there is enzyme induction there can be two reasons what are the two reasons Either there is increase in the synthesis of the cytochrome P450 enzyme systems and that is occurring in the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. All right. Or either the other cause can be uh, of the enzyme induction is there is decrease in the destruction of the enzyme system and it's the vice versa for the enzyme inhibition. So the option A is correct. Students, I want to emphasize at this point that at the end of the chapter, Many cats in there are MCQs. Kindly go through this MCQ because in your professional examination, these uh, in the paper, the questions come from these um, end of the chapter MCQs. As well as at the end of your lip and cord, there are MCQs about 8 to 10. Kindly go through th those. And uh, the good thing about the mini cats in is that the explanation of the answer is given. So if you go through the explanation, you can prepare a very small topic at the same time instead of just uh, looking at the option, you can also study the topic. All right. So this question was from the um, chapter of drug metabolism. Kindly go through all the chapter, end of the chapter questions so that your journal of pharmacology is very much well prepared. And apart from uh, uh, mini cadzing, go through the MCQs of lip and cord as well. And uh, I hope uh, you will understand general pharmacology because we have uh, put a lot of emphasis on this topic and we have prolonged this general pharmacology for you people. We have gone very slowly so that you can grasp the concept. But I know there is, um, of course, some people have net issues and some people are not very much attentive in this uh, uh, YouTube lectures. But that is why we are conducting uh, frequent and regular uh, tutorials for you people. So kindly come prepared with the pharmacodynamics as well. All right. assignment of uh, today's lecture you have to I have covered many examples and there are many more to come uh, go through the chapter of pharmacogenetics in your textbooks and few examples are left which need to be explained go through because you have to read this chapter it is newly incorporated in your books so you have to write down the details of acute intermittent porphyria acatalasia atropine esterase deficiency and glucose 6-phosphate dehydrogenase deficiency. So in your notebooks, uh, write the detail of these four examples so that you know how the genetic 
makeup of one individual can affect the response of a drug in different individuals so it's a very important and emerging topic for all of you who are you are going to become uh, doctors soon so you are uh, and you'll be practicing you will be prescribing the drug as a physician so you need to know okay in some individuals some drugs are not to be given and why this is a very big question mark rather than to avoid hit and trial method to avoid the adverse effects and to uh, not to waste the time of the person in that particular disease so it is once again remember what is the goal of pharmacogenetics to give the right drug to the right person for the right disease at the very right time okay so with that i end today's uh, lecture and uh, submit this assignment in your particular in your respective whatsapp groups and uh, we, i wish you all the best for the uh, assignment and uh, you will be having a tutorial on thursday and kindly come prepared with that that would be uh, comprising of the uh, pharmacodynamics and uh, kindly go through the lectures on the youtube which have been shared with you and it would be interactive session come prepared with it all right allah hafiz